guide curves used with the sweep feature allow you to vary the size of the profile as it is swept along its path. Let's take a look at a simple example of this. Here I have two sketches, a square sketched on the front plane and a horizontal line sketched on the right plane. Before I click the sweep icon, I want to create a third sketch to be used as a guide curve. I'll start a new sketch on the right plane. The sketch will be a spline. When you sketch a guide curve, it must be attached to the profile somehow. In other words, I cannot have a guide curve like this. The sketch has to touch the profile like this. To ensure the curve is attached to the profile, you can use a special geometric relation called Pierce. To use the Pierce relation, keep one important item in mind. The Pierce relation is only available between a curve and a point. If you select two points, the Pierce relation will not be available. You must select a point and a curve, such as a sketch entity. Here I'll select the end point of the spline, the point, and the edge of the profile sketch, the curve. You can see the Pierce relation appear in the Property Manager. I'll select it, and now I'm sure that the point is exactly on the profile sketch. Before I exit the Guide Curve sketch, there are some things you should know about the length of the guide curve and path. Essentially, the sweep will only go as far as the shortest curve, whether it's the path or the guide curve. If you have a situation where you're using multiple guide curves, the shortest one will control the length of the sweep. In this case, I want the sweep to be as long as the path. So to make sure the guide curve is at least as long as the path, I will create a horizontal relation between the end point of the spline and the end point of the path. I'll exit the sketch and click the sweep icon. Using the sketch profile option, I'll select the profile and the path. To use the guide curve, I'll expand the guide curve section and select the other sketch. In the preview, you can see how the sweep is now shaped by the guide curve. I'll click OK and the sweep and the guide curve is complete. Before we conclude this lesson, I want to point out an important detail when working with guide curves. Remember, the purpose of guide curves is to change the size of the profile as it is swept along a path. Let me edit the profile sketch. Notice this square is not dimensioned. If I add a dimension to the square, as soon as I exit the sketch, the sweep will not work. When the size of the square is defined with a dimension, the guide curve cannot change its size as it is swept along the path. In most cases, Fully defining your profile sketch defeats the purpose of using guide curves. One more thing I want to mention. In this example, I sketched the profile before sketching the path or guide curve. If you sketch the path and guide curves first, you can use them as guidelines as you create the profile. If you intend to use guide curves, I highly recommend you sketch them before sketching your profile. This will help you avoid using dimensions and relations on your profile that may accidentally restrict your use of guide curves as we just saw. This is only a recommendation, but one that can keep you out of trouble when using guide curves.